Today's video is proudly sponsored by Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all the popular distributions, such as Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and get this, even Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux-focused cloud server provider that lets you tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You could use it to host a blog, a VPN server, a Minecraft server, and much more. In fact, Linode is the platform of choice to host the entire web presence of Learn Linux TV. In addition, Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support, regardless of plan size, so you can get help from a live person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 towards your new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to go over the awk command. And I say command, but it's more of a scripting language. And it's a very useful scripting language that you can use to manipulate text and do all kinds of things. And I'm going to give you the basics in this video, but just the basics though, because, well, this is the Linux Essentials series. And I wanna make sure that you guys have a grounded basis that you can use to build your future knowledge on so we're just going to go over the basics today, but by the end of the video, you will know how to use the awk command. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk a little bit more about how awk works. You can use awk to create filters, basically to write scripts to accept data from standard input, change it in some way, and then send that data back out via standard output in its changed form. In general, Standard input is usually in the form of a text file, and standard output is typically your screen. But you can also chain commands directly into awk as well, which you'll be seeing shortly, so you don't have to have a text file to work with, but working with a text file is how we're going to get started. Now offline, I actually went ahead and prepared a text file that we're going to use for a number of examples. I'm a big fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I figured I would use this opportunity to fit it into this video, so I did. And here's the output of that file. Now in this file, I have four lines. Each one is representing one of the Ninja Turtles themselves. So we have Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. And we don't just have their names, we have their bandana color on each line, as well as their personality. Now, if you're not familiar with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially if you are watching this from an area where that's not popular, it started off as a comic book, it later became a television series, and then movies. But anyway, you didn't come here to hear about the Ninja Turtles, you came here specifically for awk. So how does this fit in with awk? By default, the awk command sees spaces as delimiters for fields. So if awk assumes that each space in between words is the delimiter for a field, then what we can glean here is that we have three fields in each of these lines here. So we have the name of the character right here, we have their color, and we have their personality, or in this case, their role. So let's go ahead and see how this fits into awk. So the way that awk works, we type the awk command itself, and then what we need to do is give it a command. We need to tell it what we want it to do with that particular file. Now, in this case, what I'm going to have it do is print. So we have the command in single quotes, and the command itself is in brackets. And then we give it a file name for the file that we want to work with. So I'll press enter, and there's no difference. In the first command here, I use the cat command, which is one of several commands that you can use to print the contents of a file. That's not all it's used for, but that's what we're using it for here and then it spit out the contents of the file, as we can see right here. And then we decided to use awk. We wanted to print, 
and we want it to print the contents of that file. So essentially it does the same thing. Now in this case, I would probably argue that the cat command is better because, well, I'm typing fewer characters to print out the contents of the file. And now it's going to actually diverge from what we use the cat command for. And we're about to see that awk is a lot more useful than we might think. So let's try that one more time and show the contents of that TMNT file. But this time, let's show a specific field. So by looking at this command right here, you could probably guess what it's going to do. And if you guessed that it's going to show the first field and the first field only, then you guessed correctly. And that's exactly what it did. By comparison, if I don't include the dollar sign one right here, it's going to print each field of each line. So what we can glean from this is that with the dollar sign one, we were able to tell it that we want it to print the first field for every line, which is what dollar sign one represents, the first field. So for example, I can go ahead and change this to two. And also I could change it to three. So now I hope you're starting to see the value that awk gives us. It allows us to selectively print a specific field. But I mentioned earlier though that awk is a scripting language and that there's so much you could do with it that it's beyond the scope of a video to show you everything. And that's true. Here we're printing something. We're printing individual fields. There's certainly more that we can use it for than just that. Now I mentioned here that we are adding a command in the brackets. Technically, that's a script. We have a script in the brackets. Now you could get so advanced with awk that you can write entire scripts that'll span more than one line. We're not going to do that in today's video, but I just wanted to let you know that it gets orders of magnitude more advanced from here because awk is one of those tools that when you learn it, you're going to keep learning new things. And that's great because that keeps it fresh. Anyway, another interesting thing that we can do is change the field number to zero. And that's going to print everything because zero represents the entire file. But we may as well have just not included that at all and the output is exactly the same. But if nothing else, now you know what zero means. In addition, you can also tell awk that you want to print more than one field. So what I'm going to do right here is print field one and field three. I separated the two via a comma, dollar sign one for field number one and dollar sign three for field number three. And that's exactly what it did. The second field was the color. It omitted that because we told awk that we only want the first field as well as the third. And that's not all. I mentioned earlier that even though you will commonly use awk with a file, you don't have to use awk with a file. You can also chain things into awk as well. So for example, I'll run ls-l, as we already know, that gives us a long listing of the files and directories that are in our current working directory. And you could probably tell where I'm about to go with this. We could pipe a command such as ls directly into the awk command. And this output is completely useless. It printed the permission string for each object inside this directory, but we don't even know what the individual objects are. We only have that one field. But even if it's useless, that was a valid command. It did exactly what we told it to do. So when we use a command that has spaces in between fields, for example, permission string, a date, and things like that, awk is going to see these as individual fields. So field one, field two, field three, field four, and so on. Because again, by default, it sees a space as well as a tab as a delimiter for a field. So as you could probably guess, I could change it to field number two or field number four, five, and so on. And for the most part, you could do whatever you want when it comes to chaining commands together. That's one of the things that makes the command line so darn useful. You could take a command that does a particular thing 
and then you can have the output of that command sent as the input to another command to produce your intended result. So here I have a simple echo statement. Nothing too surprising there, but let's have a bit of fun. Let's actually pipe that command directly into the awk command. So I wasted all this time typing this entire sentence right here just to have awk truncate it down to the very first word, the nerve of that command. Well, actually, that's exactly what I told it to do. The individual words in this echo statement right here are going to be assumed to be separate fields by awk because, again, spaces are the delimiters by default. So when I actually took the output of this command, this echo command, and I piped it into the awk command, which is actually wrapped a bit here, but here it is, it's going to take this sentence, which is what echo does, echo echo something, it echoed this sentence, it echoed this sentence, it echoed this sentence, and awk grabbed that and printed out the very first field, which is going to be hello, because it's the first thing to have a space next to it. Similarly, just like before, we can actually print more than one field. So you get the idea. Now let's take a look at a few more examples of the awk command. So in this case, what I'm going to do is type awk, And I'm going to adjust the command a little bit because before I was printing individual fields, field one, field two, field three, and so on. But instead of a field number, I have NF. NF stands for number of fields. Essentially, whatever the last field happens to be is what's going to be printed. So if you have 99 fields, then the 99th field is what's going to be grabbed by this command. And as you can see here, that's exactly what it did. The file tmnt had three fields. So in this case, nf is going to equal three. It's going to equal whatever the final field number actually is. So leader, hothead, party animal, and so on. And we see that's exactly what it did. So what do you do in a situation where you have a file, you want to print a specific field number from that file, but the fields aren't actually separated by spaces? And the perfect example of that is the Etsy password file. There's no spaces on any of the lines here. So if I wanted to print the second field of Etsy password, it's going to have some unintended side effects. We can see right here that it printed my last name. And the reason why it did that is because we have a space right here. So according to awk, for this line in particular, it thinks that there's two fields. This one, and this one. So using awk with this particular file, that didn't really work out too well. But thankfully, that's easy to fix. So here, near the beginning of the awk command, we can use the dash capital F option, and that allows us to set a different delimiter or field separator for awk to use to differentiate one field from another. And what I'm going to do is set that equal to colon, as you see here. So this is the new option. I'm telling it again that I want the field separator to be something else. So now when I press enter, we get a completely different result. And this time we get the correct result. The second field is legitimately an X. So if I was to change that, for example, to a different field number, we get a different result. We should get a different result every time we use a different field number. In this case, I am able to view the shell for each user right here. But that's not very useful, is it? Now let's make that a little bit more useful. So if I wanted to find out which shell each user on my system is using, and I didn't want to see any of the other fields, then I could select field number one, which should be the username, and then field number seven, which should be the shell. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, it worked. Check this out. My user is using bin bash, 
This user that I created in a different video is using bin sh. So I was able to use a more practical example of awk by selectively looking for users and printing what their shells are. And as you can see right here, that was useful. So there you go. I've just taught you guys the basics of the awk command. And by basics, I mean the basics, because there's so much more that you could do with the awk command than just this. But it's really important that you memorize the basics, because again, that'll serve as the foundation for future learning. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.